Strip Podcast, the Dog Days of Summer edition of the Grip Strip Podcast. My name is Philip Matthew. I'm your host, and I'm back as always with my co-host, the iRacing Indy 500 champion, a computer genius, a gentleman, a scholar, and one of Jacksonville Jaguars' biggest fans. His name is Josh Fine. What's going on, brother? I am doing great, Phil. As always, you know, glad to be back on the show this week. Of course, uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, my father, absolutely, um, everything. So, um, everybody out there, hope y'all had a good weekend and all that. And yeah, ready to get into the show. Yeah, definitely. Ha- happy Father's Day, all the fathers out there that listen to our show, and to my dad up above, and um, to Wyndham Clark's father, since uh, his his son is now a U.S. Open champion. Uh, even though all the talk was about his mother and the close relationship he had which was awesome too but definitely um interesting weekend of racing at least at road america um definitely not at montreal um indycar alex polo continues to show uh the domination and talent that uh, he did two years ago when he won the championship, his third win of 2023, and has a, lar- a very uh, big points lead. Uh, wasn't straightforward for the Ganassi driver by any stretch of the imagination. There were a few guys that were up there that gave him a battle, so we'll definitely talk about that. Uh, Formula One's probably going to take about five minutes. Because, I mean, that's really why, I mean, we should time it now. Like, that's what we should do. Like, we should we should commit now to this show where we're going to commit, like, seven and a half minutes to Formula One uh, for the rest of time, as long as this that cocksucker and that team wins. We're going to commit seven and a half minutes to Formula One so we can spend more time on other motorsports series. And this is from a guy who's NASCAR driver's tw- 32nd in points. That's how much I can't stand watching Formula One. I'm willing to cut talking about Formula <laughs> One so I can talk more NASCAR. That's how bad it is. Uh, Fish Lips won again, tied Iert and Senna for 41 wins uh, in his career, 100 wins for Red Bull. Uh, Fred Alonso and Lewis Hamilton rounded out the podium. So an interesting dynamic there with an eight-time champion, a two-time champion, and a one-and-a-half-time champion. Uh, it'll be it, in the record books. It'll say two and a, it'll say three, but it's two and a half uh, for fish lips. So we'll we'll talk about that for a couple minutes uh, to give you the point standings as they head to Austria. Uh, NASCAR will spend time on mid-season grades, 10 races to go in the regular season for the Cup Series. NBC comes back, so we get to hear, Slide job! Or slide whatever. Job, Dale. Slide job, slide yeah. job. <laughs> oh, goodness! While he goes and hits uh, hits Steve Letarte in the ribs. Um, old June bug. Uh, it's kind of interesting also, since uh, Matt Weaver... It's not like it has been a secret by any stretch of the imagination, but Matt Weaver and others have come out and said that this week will be the announcement that Josh Berry will be announced as the replacement for Kevin Harvick in the four car at Stuart Haas Racing. So hopefully that's a wake up call for all the people who are not bothering to do their job there since they suck outside of the four car. Uh, we'll talk of that kind of fits what we're talking about, who has been a surprise or what has been the big key people so far this year in all three major series and who has been a disappointment and who has stunk up the show, like the other three Stuart Haas racing cars. Uh, in the roundup, we'll talk about MotoGP. Uh, Peko Bagnaya gets beat by Jorge Martin in a great battle there. They're going to be going all the way to the end of the season it looks like it's a ducati benefit if you don't like ducati you're not going to want to watch moto gp the rest of the year uh moto 2 we'll talk about that socks and ring and they'll be at Assen, which is one of the greatest circuits on planet earth for motorcycles supercars at hidden valley what a shocker the camaros won again the bop in the supercars might be worse than the wec bop indy next at road america 
we'll give you a preview of the six hours at the Glen, one of the greatest races in sports car racing. IMSA, all the IMSA teams that went off to Le Mans and have been off for a while will be coming back. Uh, some of the ones that didn't run at Detroit, or they didn't run at Detroit either this year. Uh, we'll get to Rally Kenya for the WRC. Formula E will be racing here in the U.S. in the Northwest, uh, where um, Fred Armisen's from in Portland. And uh, F1 Academy in Zanfort in front of 12 people. We will uh, preview Cup and Xfinity at Nashville, or Cup Xfinity and Trucks at Nashville. Uh, I was mistaken last week uh with what i said in the preview or her review and then uh josh will tell us all things i racing and gaming since f123 is also coming out in his sim segment and uh close the deal so yeah let's go with this um and thanks again to tommy kendall uh we had a great time last week if you didn't listen to that episode please do uh might have been one of the best episodes if not the best episode we've done of this show and we were in this we're now in our fourth year of doing it so 90 minutes with a, le- a motorsports legend you can't really go wrong and the amount of topics we talked about and the amount of inside information that tommy gave us probably yeah. hasn't said it very on mainstream media so definitely want to listen to that um and even gave and even gave marriage advice too yes yeah. investment advice and marriage advice so, um, Loads of if you're definitely, uh, speaking of information and somebody who's bringing the heat at all times, his name is Alex Polo, um, absolute, uh, wonderkind, uh, his, I, his whole entire family like defies aging because his dad looks just as young as he does. So I think he's 14 and his dad's like 18 or some crap. I don't know how they do that in Spain. It must be the water. Um, absolutely uh, great. Uh, great job by him late in the race to go and get his third win of 2023. His second win at Road America in three years. Uh, takes a 74 point lead in a mid Ohio here in a couple weeks' time. Alex Pelot, the winner of the San Sio Grand Prix at Road America, over Joseph Newgarden, the Indianapolis 500 champion, Pato Ward, who started second in the race, but definitely wasn't up front the whole day. Scott Dixon, from 23rd, finished fourth, which just speaks to Scott Dixon being who he is. Colton Herta from pole finished fifth, Marcus Erickson, Christian Lundgaard in a car that looked like the GoDaddy car, Um, Scott McLaughlin from 18th, Kyle Kirkwood, and Alexander Rossi rounding out the top 10. Uh, Everybody sands the final four cars in the race were uh, on the the lead lap, but get into some of those people a little later. But yeah, Alex Pillow had to pass... Had to pass Colton Herta with, what, seven laps to go, six laps to go. And on fuel mile, it was a fuel mileage situation there. Colton Herta pitted one lap earlier than a lot of the other guys that ended up passing him. And that played a big part in what ended up costing Herta, who had dominated the weekend, qualified on pole. And um, it looked pretty straightforward for him. But unfortunately, as is the case usually with Colton Herta, it never really is, even with all the pace that he had. Um, four cautions in the race, which is very unusual for uh, IndyCar. Uh, the, uh, w- initially, it was with the first caution was caused by Kyle Kirkwood when he hit uh, Pato Award, uh, spun out and stalled his uh, number 27 Andretti Autosport car. Then uh, the second caution was another 11 laps later. They had uh, Roman Grosjean, who was kind of going into the way that he used to be in Formula One, which is pushing too hard and crashing a lot, because I think he spent more time off track than he did on track yesterday. Um, It's a good thing he's employed by Lamborghini, because I'm not so sure if he's going to be employed by Andretti Autosport at the end of this year. 
the third caution. They had two cautions basically back to back, which made the race pretty god awful. Um, that's uh, Jack Harvey, another guy that's not going to have a job next year. And then uh, he went off the track, went off, and went and that was on a restart, on the restart from the previous caution, went off the track on the left side, slid off, went through the sand trap, and hit the fence. And then the last caution was David Malukas, who had had a great weekend going until race day itself and um, went off the track and fell out of the race. A uh, big, uh, after last year when he showed a lot of talent and ability, this year has definitely been a, a, a sophomore slump for him. Granted, his teammate has is god awful, so that probably doesn't help when you had uh, Takuma Sato. Uh, instead at in that car who's a veteran who's been through everything and now um, have a rookie raw rookie who probably is is only there because of money um, that's gonna hurt your cause but we had uh, Alex Polo there he was up front most of the day kind of pushing Colton Herta and we can make the argument that his pushing of Colton Herta, even in save mode, even though Colton Herta said that he wasn't really going at 100%, they went and blinked first, and that going first was the reason why he lost the race. And Alex Polo right now has a 74-point lead in the championship with nine races to go. Not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination, but my goodness, that is a huge points lead, especially in this format it's an it's a race and a half lead in the IndyCar point standings and i mean yes he's not exactly the greatest on ovals there are a few ovals coming up here i think three oval races uh, left in the season but alex Pillow proving once again and maybe uh there's a possibility that they can repair the relationship and uh, Kanassi keeps him which could, you know, to keep Felix Rosenquist in a job. But who knows what's going to happen with that. Talk about him going to, you know, McLaren or, or to Alpha Tori or somewhere like that. He looks like that kind of guy that could go to in, in Formula One and actually compete. Um, there are guys in this series uh, that are probably not too long for it. You can make an argument even for Logan Sargent, but because he drives for Williams, he's probably going to get a little bit of a pass and because they run like four Grand Prix in America or whatever it is. But Alex Pillow at a different level right now, Josh. And for Joseph Newgarden, for Scott Dixon, for whoever is trying to to stay with him in points, for Marcus Erickson, they have a lot of work to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have a lot of work to do, and Pillow is you know, slowly going, going on a tear here and you know, he's just been very dominant to start off this season here in IndyCar. And, you know, I, you talk about his repairing his relationship with Ganassi and, you know, potentially continuing on with him uh, here in IndyCar. Well, obviously, he's still contracted with McLaren over in F1 as the reserve driver. And certainly, you have to consider that aspect as well. And, you know, there's another guy who drove for Chip Ganassi back in the day in IndyCar and dominated on his way to a championship and then eventually went on to F1 on Montoya. So potentially here, uh, you know, this is a, a path that we we could see uh, um, in the future. Obviously, he doesn't have a Indy 500 like uh, Juan Montoya did back in 2000 before going on to drive for Williams F1. But the opportunity is there. Uh, as he's already a test driver and you know maybe he ends up just doing that going to f1 um somehow with uh with mclaren or another team uh if if possible so um that's something to keep in mind i think um going forward uh but yeah he's been been so dominant to start start the year you know he, he had yeah polo had a, a championship but not the indy 500 so um yeah, and Juan, Juan Montoya. Yeah, no, you're good. No, Juan Montoya. He had the championship in '99, and then the Indy 500 in 2000. Um, so there's that, but not a big deal there. They still both of them very capable uh, drivers there. Uh, so you know, I think uh, for you know for Alex, like 
that's what you have to look out for, you know, going forward now. Um, can he, you know, win this title? He's already at a 74-point lead. So it's definitely uh, a huge possibility now. And, um, you know, the other guys like Newgarden won the, the 500, but still has a lot of ground to make up uh, for, you know, this season uh, in comparison to Pelot. And there's still still a ton of time left. You know, obviously, um, Newgarden, um, you know, if he has the same car that he had last year at Iowa, he can easily make that one up. All he has to do is not crash uh, at the second race like he did last year. So that's um, another possibility because that's effectively a double points race if you consider that one race weekend broken up into two small races. So that's uh, something to consider there. And, um, you know, Pelot's not really that good at ovals. Uh, the short, I think he's got big ovals, but, you know, short ovals, um, I think maybe still has a little bit left uh, in the tank there. Um, and know if he's as good there as uh, Newgarden. But that's, you know, kind of forward outlook there i guess but yeah as this race the, itself um you know you talked about Paloa. i mean that's another thing of his ability being able to just pressure drivers and in, into you know making making them uh make mistakes or you know force force them into position that they don't want to be in and you know that's certainly a position when you're the leader of the race and you're trying to save fuel and you're being pressed by the uh guy behind you um you, know, you end up using more fuel, driving harder to be able to um, keep in front. Below has the draft plus repave. Uh, the, you know this year with Road America, and I think you know that allows you to keep up easier because you know you don't have to worry about um, the worn out racetrack bumps um, and things like that. So um, it definitely allows them to keep up closer. And you know, I think Below, you know, just able to um, pressure him, and stalk him into making. Um, an error in fuel saving and um, you know uh, Colton Herta ends up not winning the race um, and you know, hasn't won a race in a while so uh, definitely you know think you know Herta missed an opportunity there um, uh, you know having to save more fuel uh, at the end and everything so um, yeah this is definitely a really interesting race you know of course we had the pre-race drama with Will Power and Scott Dixon and Roman Grosjean, which is pretty entertaining, and yeah, the most the most animated that we've seen Will Power since uh, probably Double Birds back in 2011 in New Hampshire. So you know that was uh, definitely interesting to see. And then they patched it up the next day on on the grid uh, there, and then of course saying that Roman Grosjean needs to be punched uh, in the face and he's a piece of crap. So. <laughs> That was a pretty interesting comment there from Will Power. But, yeah, this was a pretty interesting race you know, overall with uh, the Indy cars. Um, always a great track at Road America. And, you know, I think the new dynamic with um, the, you know, with the repave definitely made for some, you know, more interesting racing, especially, um, you know, with uh, how repaves we've seen in the past. Repaves, sometimes clean air takes a bigger effect. But I think... The strategy also came into play here, and that's uh, always what's what makes racing interesting. Yeah, Joseph Newgarden mentioned how the Penske team or his particular team uh, struggled with the smoother racetrack, which, of course, first time repave for, for Road America since 1995. Uh of course, Ganassi didn't have as big of an issue getting all their cars, three of their cars in the top ten. Armstrong uh, almost caused a bit of an issue there late, but he said he saw the car and knew everything. He had a really fast race car and was up there early in the race. Um, in the grand scheme of things, Ganassi right now is a bit ahead. Um, you wonder if if Dixon was able to actually qualify. Will Power is able to qualify. What could have happened with the race for those two guys? Um, unfortunately, that's not what happened, but mid Ohio, of course, is one of, uh, many racetracks that Scott Dixon is great at. Uh, we'll talk about it next week, uh, to see who we think is going to go out there and win. It's definitely a time now where if the, you haven't won this season, you're right smack dab in the middle of the season. It's a very busy month of July. You're going to have, uh, you're going to have a permanent road course, temporary road course, two ovals, two oval races. So uh, it's you're right in the heart, right in the meat of the schedule now. 
Uh, if you don't come good here in the next probably month and a half, where you're going to have six races, uh, you're not going to win the championship. And um, so it's it's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic right now, but Alex Pillow is really effing good. And um, I, I mean, if any of these stupid idiots who are in Formula One, they run their uh they run these teams they should be looking at him because that that guy can drive uh, he proved it in super formula to be an out be a non-japanese driver in super formula and to be able to compete for a championship i think that also speaks to his viability as well all uh, right now 74 point lead on his t- polo has on his teammate marcus erickson erickson is seven points ahead of joseph newgarden the two guys that battle for the Indy 500, Pato Award and Scott Dixon tied for they're tied fourth and fifth. Uh, Scott Dixon said he's going to wait till later this season to use his uh, salvo on um, on Pato Award for what happened in Long Beach. Scott er, McLaughlin is in sixth. Uh, he's 27 points behind Dixon and Award, three points ahead of Alexander Rossi, nine ahead of Will Power. And what is that? 16 ahead of Colton Herta. And that's really where we're at. Uh, I think anybody outside of those guys is probably done. Kirkwood, Lungard, R- Rosenquist are all pretty tight together. Was it six points between those guys? And Roman Grosjean is 14 points out of 10th, but he's very inconsistent. So. I think right now, I mean, for the championship, it's going to be hard for some of those guys, I think, outside of Scott Dixon, because he's still within 100 points. Uh, if you're outside of 100 points, it's kind of been proven over time that you're not going to really make that up uh, unless you go on an absolute heater uh, in 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 the summer and that or in, in a, a key time during the season, which, to be fair, that's where they're at, uh, starting with mid-Ohio. But we will definitely talk about that next week on the GSP uh, in episode 175 leading into uh, July the 4th weekend and um, everything that's going on there. All right, Canadian Grand Prix. Let's try, let's go and get the timer out. Uh, Let me go. Yeah, so uh, because my watch is on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, charger i can actually go let me go and get this this is actually good content right here people where we're getting our stopwatches out so because of how this is how interesting formula one is when you're make you're trying to find stopwatches because of how great the competition is for all the assholes that cried wolf when lewis was dominating he didn't dominate this much last time i checked his teammate actually won races too um, you know, that was also a thing instead of being a, a shithole that goes and spits out drivers. Um, yeah. All right. right. I've got Three. my timer. So you ready? To all do right. It? I'm just going to go and bring up the results quickly. And all right. Three, two, one, go. So okay. for stopping one by just under 10 seconds, it could have been even more, but they threw a full safety car. Uh, it's there earlier in the race where he jumped he went it was a uh local or what do you call a uh not a local yellow whatever uh what are, what do they call that shit when they do the um the virtual the safety car virtual safety car yeah thank you um so they did a vsc for logan Sargent's blown engine and then they eventually made it a full safety car where um max were stopped and went and gained too much of an advantage but of course they didn't call it uh, he was over five and a half seconds ahead at that point. And that was on Lewis. Lewis ended up getting passed by Alonzo. Hamilton tried to get back at Alonzo later in the race, but the Aston Martin with their upgrades uh, ended up uh, being faster. The Ferraris, of course, did Ferrari things in qualifying, had to battle back to finish fourth and fifth. Sergio Perez missed Q3. Again, uh, battled back to sixth. Alexander Albon for Williams with their new upgrade package in his seventh. 
Esteban Ocon, Lance Stroll, and Valtteri Botas uh, rounded out the top 10. Uh, George Russell had a tank slapper after going over one of the curbs, uh, one of the uh, the last chicane there, or next slash chicane on the one side of the track. Crashed the car, somehow or another was able to drive it, and then they eventually told him to park it. Um, mentioned Logan Sargent there. Other than that, nothing great significant. McLaren did qualify in the top 10, but then weren't able to make anything happen in the race. The point standings, we know that Fish Lips is going to win the world championship. Uh, versus Perez is nine points ahead of Fernando Alonso for second in the world championship, 24 ahead of Lewis Hamilton. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. Um, signs Russell Leclerc separated by 14 points for fifth. So that's also something we'll check out. The midfield battle, of course, is much closer. In constructors, Mercedes is up by 13 points, largely because Fernando Alonso drives by himself. Uh, don't tell Lauren Stroll that. Um, even though George Russell on a, a lie detector said he's faster than Lewis Hamilton, um, that's not been the case this year. Um, and then Ferrari way back and forth. Uh, Alpine is out in their own island in fifth. McLaren is up by eight points on Alpha, nine on Haas, and ten on Williams, who's now jumped Alpha Tori by five points. So that's big for the Williams team. Uh, as we move on to Austria. Okay, great. Um, let's move on to NASCAR here. I don't know how long that was, but well, does probably have four minutes and fifteen seconds counting down. So oh, yeah, that, that was, was me. That was that was me kind of stumbling on what I wanted to say initially too. So it could have been quicker. But oh yeah, well no, it's like um, you remember uh, ESPN the fastest two minutes. Well, yeah. maybe the Matt fastest three and a half minutes. But um, bum bum bum. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, with with uh, Chris, Chris Berman. Berman. And all of his, his his nicknames and crap. Yeah, that is true. That's a good one. Good way. We're going to have to do that for the rest of the season with Formula One for sure because there really isn't a whole hell of a lot to talk about. All right, so let's go backwards from trucks to cup because obviously we're going to go and talk about all of them here later on. Uh, truck series has definitely not been all that exciting. I mean, really, is it going to be uh, when you have all these people that really are ride buyers and they suck? Um, but, you know, you got to take for what it is. The truck series right now, we're at uh, how many races into the se season right now? Out of curiosity, I should bring it up on Racing Reference because they own Racing Reference now. Be easier. At Twelve races and going twelve into the thirteenth. Yeah, twelve and a th yeah. Okay, thank you. And so the yeah, so twelve, thirteen. They're in their thirteenth race going in. Uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Pocono is the cutoff, I believe. And then Erno, I think Richmond's the cutoff. There you go. So they got one, two, three, four, five races to four races to go. Sorry. Uh, in the regular season, and then they'll be uh, starting their playoff in August at IRP, Milwaukee, Kansas, then Bristol, Talladega, Homestead, and of course the final, for whatever reason, at Phoenix for nobody that really likes racing. Um, I'll start here uh, with uh, people that have been... Uh, a surprise or people that have actually done that or something that has stood out to me. I think Christian Eckes, after getting, he's been canned by Kyle Busch Motorsports. He got let go by Thor Sport for uh, Miss Hummer 2.0. Um, the fact of the matter is, for him to land on his feet with the McAnally Hilgeman team, they haven't really been known for having a lot of speed. Krauss has got quite a reputation 
but he's gone out there, won two races, kind of showing the talent that people thought he had and won an ARCA championship and all that stuff. So right now he's one of the top guys. He's one of three drivers with two wins this season. I look at him and I also look at Corey Heim. Granted, he's one of Toyota's top prospects right now, but moving to the, uh, what are they, the, um, the Tricon team, Tricon Garage, a.k.a. Gill and Gray Racing, to that, with that organization after the Toyota money moved from Kyle Busch, not so sure how they were going to show up, how they were going to be able to perform, but they definitely have, and he is definitely a favorite. Granted, he didn't miss the last race with an illness. Not sure what uh, what's coming from that, if he's all right to go and race this weekend. We still don't know that for sure. He's on the entry list for this Friday. But I think those are two guys that have definitely been uh, nice surprises in uh, the season. I think also in terms of really being a, a true surprise, because you know that Eck has had talent, Corey Heim has talent, and they've been out there and people know their names. Uh, Tanner Gray has definitely been a surprise this year. He's in the top 10 in points. He's in contention to make the playoff right now. Uh, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, seven, eight. Yeah, he's ninth in, in the playoff points right now and ninth overall. And Matt D. Burrito's behind him. And D. Burrito's run, I don't know how many cup races, albeit a lesser organization, but. Um, Gray, the former pro stock champion in NHRA, of course, the Gray family made their name initially in drag racing, his dad, his grandfather, but they moved over to NASCAR, his younger brother, considered the better talent, of course, always has run ovals. Um, he's, um, he's only run nine races this year because he had to miss the first few races of the year. Um, due to not being 18 years old. But I think those are three names that kind of stand out in terms of the good category. Uh, Josh, uh, is there anybody else you would like to talk about? Or I mean, I think, you know, the Nick Sanchez, you know, he's been, he's been, I mean, he's on the top 10 and he hasn't had a, a win yet, but he's led a handful of laps this year. And had five top tens and a top uh, five and two poles. So he's been doing pretty good, I think, for a rookie in the truck series this year. So um, I would say he's been pretty good. And you also give a shout out to Jake Garcia, even though he hasn't, um, he's had one last race or less race. Uh, and he has the same amount of top tens and top fives as uh, Nick Sanchez. So I think those two guys have been. Uh, pretty interesting uh surprises there that are outside the top 10 um who haven't really had uh you know too much uh to show for um in terms of top 10s um but yeah i i think those two guys um who are kind of dark horses um that have been quietly quietly good but they just need more consistency yeah it definitely makes sense those two guys have been really good and Right now, the squeeze is on. If they can get a win, then more than likely they're going to make it in. Uh, points are not theoretically in their favor, especially for Garcia. Um, Nick Sanchez could point his way in. He's only 11 points behind D Burrito, 17 behind uh, Tanner Gray. Uh, I'm looking on reference, so I don't have the... Um, points for sure there i'm trying to go and look at where yeah there you go the owner the driver points bring that up uh, right now you know nick sanchez has two stage wins as well so i mean there's he's 18 points out of ninth um oh well no not 18 points out of nine that's overall um or maybe wait they say so maybe they haven't updated it okay um, we got this one, four, one, two, six winners, seven, eight, nine, ten. It says, yeah, it says, uh, so I got that wrong there. Uh, my fault. Crafton, Friesen, 
D Burrito are your top 10. Tanner Gray fell out of the top 10. Nick Sanchez is in 12th. So right now, uh, Nick Sanchez 18 points out of 9th, uh, which is Stuart Friesen. Thank you, Racing Reference, once again coming through. Uh, yeah, those are definitely, I do agree Josh with Josh's uh, two uh, surprise guys, both rookies. Definitely a lot of talent when you consider that Kyle Busch Motorsports has basically demoted themselves into having shitty ride buyers uh, in in Purdy and all the other crap that drives a 51 when it isn't Kyle Busch or a cup driver. Having Nick Sanchez, a defending ARCA champion in there, uh, I think they need to be emphasizing getting him across the across the line there to get him into the playoff uh, for sure. I think disappointments, I would say that to a point, Stuart Friesen has been a disappointment this year. He's a guy that's been in the Final Four before, somebody who's considered a, a contender uh, generally. I think that's one, but he's in the he's in the playoffs right now uh, with a few races to go in the regular season. You got short tracks coming up. He's been good on the cookie cutters. Possibly could make something happen there. I think the other person that's been a disappointment uh, so far this year, because there's not that many other people that have run every race, I think has been Haley Deegan. You consider she's driving for Thor Sport Racing. All three of her teammates are in the top 10. Uh, Ty Majeski has basically been right there to win a race. He hasn't won one yet. He's only a point out of the overall points lead. Uh, he wrecked with Zane Smith trying to win the race at Gateway. Um, so he's, I mean, an overall playing second, fifth, and Crafton is Crafton. He's been around for 900 years. He's eighth in points. And Haley Deegan, 17th. I mean, when is she going to actually show what she's, if everyone says she's as talented as everyone talks about, I mean, I know she's talented at knob gobbling, but is she really going to go and drive a damn race car instead of running over somebody? Can she actually drive it? The trucks, granted, she drove that one Xfinity race with Stuart Haas equipment out Vegas and did pretty well. Um, is it that she needs more horsepower? I don't know what the deal is with her. Uh, they need to figure something out with that. Uh, I don't know how many years now it's been in the truck series, and she's never really done anything. Uh, it kind of just seems like Miss Hummer 2.0, which, I mean, that's what she is. Uh, she just hasn't started to go into conspiracy theories and alien talk or whatever like she Miss Hummer does on her shitty podcast. Even though Sky, Sky Sports, for whatever reason, employs that cunt. But whatever. Uh, we'll go to Xfinity now, um, next for the, uh, whatever their, their season so far, 14 races into the, the, uh, regular season, go and bring up the driver points here, Josh, uh, you go first, uh, let us know where, what you're thinking, who are some of the people that have stood out to you as, uh, some of the best and, I'll chime in with the surprises because we got 11 races to go in their regular season uh, here. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me, I'm the two guys that I think I'm pretty, uh, you know, surprised or not surprised by, but, you know, impressed by their performance so far to start the year. I mean, I I think, you know, first you have to give a hats off to Austin Hill. They've, is him and his team 2021, 20, you know, for the, um, RCR, which hasn't been that strong in recent memory in Xfinity series, obviously, uh, you know, they have the two wins at the restrictor plate tracks, Daytona and now Atlanta. Right. But they also have that win early win at Las Vegas. Um, and they, you know, they're kind of riding a little bit on those, on those wins, but in the last, you know, couple of races, uh, or last four or five races, they've been on a better hot streak. You know, they were in between that Atlanta win and, uh, Dover, they had some pretty bad results, but, um, they, you know, they still, they still have been doing the 21 team been doing pretty good. And, um, I, you know, they, I think they could be a, a good shot for the regular season title. 
uh, alongside John Hunter and Imachek there. Um, I think you know another another guy for me is um, Chandler Smith. You know, as a rookie in this series, I think you know he's been really good uh, in the sixteen uh, to start off the year. Um, you know, has one win at Richmond this year, and you know he did did pretty well there. Uh, so um, I think he could be the outside shot to make it into the final four if uh, things go right. So yeah, I I think those two guys. Um, I think they've been pretty good to start the year. So um, and Sammy Smith too. He, um, he hasn't. You know, he's been pretty good as a driver as well. So got got his first win at Phoenix uh, back first the fourth race of the year. So. Um, he's been uh, exceptional so far as well. So I think you know those first you know two three drivers that I think stood out um, you know from the field you know, this year in the Xfinity series. Yeah, and Sammy Smith coming in, uh, he was showing his speed last year at times. Of course, brings all the monies. He's just a way more talented version of Michael Annette because basically seem must be the connection is close in some way shape or form because he's got all the same sponsors michael and ned had for all those years um he's been able to win a lot in uh, lower series so now he's won an xfinity um knowing that john under nemechek we don't know what is going to happen with him uh, next year but uh sammy smith i think is a prospect to be moved forward um in through into the cup series largely because of money initially but i think he has a talent to compete there um same is for john hunter but we've kind of known that uh, you talk about austin hill and he's he should be in the three car and they should renumber at the 31 if they were smart but of course richard childress is going to harbor his useless grandson the same way as people seem to harbor his other useless grandson to drive around in 30th every week for God knows how many years he's been in the Cup Series. I think some other people that I would look at um, that have made a, a made progress this year, I'll, I'll, I'll focus on two or the West Coast guys. Riley Herb started the year well. But uh, it hasn't really gone well for a while since. Uh, he's never really been known to be an amazing talent. I don't think he's going anywhere uh, similar to his lost fellow extreme monster energy uh, driver in, in Haley Deegan. Uh, and then the other one I would say is Sheldon Creed. Yeah, he has to win a race here in the next 12 races. I don't know how he hasn't won a race. I mean, granted, Parker Kligerman cleaned him out at uh, Portland, or else he might have won there. Um, he needs to win. Um, Austin Hill is showing that RCR has the equipment. He's a guy that in his second year in series usually is a championship contender. Granted, he just wants to make the top 12, and he probably is going to. But winning a race, maybe getting a couple of wins here in this last 12 races prior to their playoff is the momentum he needs to possibly compete for a championship against those big, those top two guys. And then, you know, Justin Allgaier, who the wily veteran who's been around for 800 years um, and junior motorsports and stuff. And I, I that'll go into the disappointment ca category. Junior Motorsports has definitely underperformed this year, um, which is surprising to me. You had three of the four drivers in the championship last year, and you had a lot of speed across the entire organization. Um, granted, you had Gags in there with uh, what's-his-face at crew chief in the nine car, and then you had Allgaier with uh, his old crew chief there. They had different crew chief set up. So maybe that's part of the problem. Uh, maybe they're spread a little too thin. I'm not sure about that, but I don't know why, you know, Barry was winning races. He had wins already this year or about last year at this point. The nine car was winning a lot. Him and Keebler Gibbs were getting into it. Um, of course, Gregson gets into it with anything that walks. Um, and then Allgaier too. And Mayor, to be honest, even as a rookie, seem to have more speed than he does this year. And so I think they stand out to me. I mean, Josh, you agree. 
Um, the other one I have to say is um, is with um, college racing, and I think the uh, being spread thin in terms of having the two cup teams, and they're not exactly setting the world on fire in cup anyway. Um, AJ Almanier doesn't seem to be anywhere near as happy as he was last year. Uh, they're not really running amazing. And uh, on the Xfinity side, yes, Chandler Smith took over that ride that AJ Allmendinger was in, and he's done pretty solid, and he's had his moments, but Chandler Smith, of course, is kind of another guy who's got a lot of aggro going, and he's liable to get himself into some stuff. But you look at his teammates, um, and you have Daniel Hemrick, who's barely holding on i mean that's two years in a row now after winning a champ getting moving over gumby Sindrick to win a championship and he's basically been a non-factor uh similar to what he was when he was in an rcr cup car uh and then right now they only have the two full-time regulars and then they have that star quote star car and generally speaking the I mean I think they have two wins. Uh, I I might be off. I know that AJ Allmendinger won one race uh, for them uh, at at Coda, but then I'm trying to think who else has won. Uh, was it Lars? Oh yeah, Larson won in the Larson seventeen car as in yeah. the sev- as in the ten car at Darlington. Oh, Larson also yeah. won in the ten car. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so there you go. So they have two wins with the star car, but then with the two cup guys. Um, the 11 really hasn't had any pace all year. And um, yeah, so I mean, they're, they're, they've been a disappointment for sure. I, I think I'd also say that uh, the 48 car with Parker Kligerman, it kind of proves why he didn't have a full-time ride. Um, and also the, that that, that team with big machine racing when they had the cup guys in there, they seem to win or they seem to really compete up front weekly. But when they commit to a one driver, uh, it doesn't seem like they're able to get that same kind of performance on a week in week out basis. I don't think that Kligerman by any means is worse than Jade Buford, but then Jade Buford was a road course veteran, not a oval guy. Kligerman competed for an ARCA championship years ago was a Penske development driver, has won on super speedways, has won for different teams. Uh, I think they've been a bit of a disappointment, but who knows? They can make the playoff and go and do something. Uh, 12 races to go, so plenty of time uh, to make things happen. The point standings are in his favor at the moment. He's got nine points on Bruckshot Jones, um, Jeb Burton is also going to make the playoffs. So what is it? Four, five, six, seven. So then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So actually Herbst is the bump spot. So actually Kligerman is 27 points out. So that's actually, yeah, it makes it worse uh, for him. All right, let's get into the cup series next. Uh, definitely a lot more uh, data and time to work with. Ten races to go um, to go for them in their uh, regular season. And uh, I don't know why I brought up that. The driver point standings at the moment. And we can look at it in that way. I'll I'll go and say, I mean, the people that have stood out, that it's obvious, it kind of brings back what it had been with the Gen 6 car, um, is Hendrick and, and Gibbs. You look at the points, overall point standings, it's a Gibbs car in first and a Hendrick car in second. Uh, you have, in terms of the Gibbs organization, they have four wins with their three regular drivers, veteran drivers. With Hendrick Motorsports, you have uh, five, and trying to look, yeah, they have five wins. You had two guys that have missed time this year due to various injuries. 
So they're two guys that have run the whole season, have won five races. Byron is second. Larson is 10th, but you don't have to be consistent, uber consistent right now. This format is more emphasized on going and getting wins and getting playoff points. And that's where, you know, Larson dominated in 21 on his way to his championship, but he knows that he doesn't have to do that to go and win this one. Um, I think a pleasant surprise, I mean, Martin Truex, after having a winless season last year and not even making the playoff, and Ryan Blaney, who broke his long winless streak with a dominant performance at the Coca-Cola 600 at a time where Ford is basically by far the worst manufacturer out of the three and um, well behind. The only other Ford winner this year other than Ryan Blaney has been Joey Logano, but then it's Joey Logano. Um, There's a reason why now he's a two-time Cup Series champion and he's been the leader of the Penske organization since uh, uh, Brad moved on but ryan blaney with that performance that's probably the best performance of his career in a in nascar i think in general and so he's somebody that can be a factor this year and the points also prove it he's only 24 points out of the overall lead he needs more playoff points and stage wins and stuff um those are some of the p that's those are a couple of people i mean other surprises i would say i would say the rfk yep. organization definitely with the progress they've made christopher busher and um brad keselowski last year they were out to lunch a lot of the year um but now they seem to be contenders at a lot of different racetracks road courses are definitely chris busher was never really known as a big time road racer but he's become one in this car um brad looks like he has pace again it's not to the same level as he was at his at his uh peak times at penske but he looks like a he looks like somebody that could win again which is something that didn't seem to be the case last year of course they got nailed with penalties which i find interesting that the ford team seem to get nailed with these big penalties a lot more than the other manufacturers but that's beside the point um yeah, I mean, twenty three eleven right now is both of their cars in the in the championship at the moment. So, I mean, Bubba Wallace had a rough start to the year, and uh, he's picked it up recently. And you know, for people that hate him for whatever reason, you can go and eat one because he's probably going to make the playoffs. So, cry yourself to sleep or shoot yourself. Just do us all a favor and get it go away. Um, yeah, Reddick is inconsistent this year, but uh, when he's been fast and he's been up there, he's he's a factor, which is why, you know, Junior Motorsport, why Brad Keselowski hired him for a truck, why Junior Motorsports hired him, my RCR hired him, then RCR realized that he had a he had a, he had balls and um got rid of him. He just got really lucky that Kyle Busch couldn't find a sponsor. And uh, that's the reason why he got bailed out. Uh, I think that's the number one like surprise with how quickly it's been. Um, it's come together. Granted, it's the whole entire team that uh, Tyler Reddick had for the last few years. So they were a really good organization. They were winning races late last year. They won on an oval. They won a bunch of road races. But Kyle Busch, in his second race, third overall race, but second points race, winning in the eight car and uh, winning three times so far this year. Uh, big time surprise now. Will it go the same way as it did in 2008? I mean, he was leading the points going into the the chase in 2008, and then they had an epic uh, meltdown in the playoffs. I mean, the 20 car was already melting down because Tony was leaving, and he didn't want to drive a Toyota. But the Gibbs team just basically went to went into the shitter. Will RCR will that eight car compete? Um, 
in the playoffs. That's something we have to look at. Oh, Richard um, is definitely a surprise because he broke a long losing streak by winning the Daytona 500. Um, and he's and They've and to be honest, good. yeah, that's it's that's exactly the point. I was, I mean, that's the best that team has looked. Uh, JTG Doherty since I think Marcus Ambrose drove for him. Honest to God. Or when Marcus Ambrose was there, they would do this kind of stuff. Even when AJ Allmendinger was there, they would, like, he would do it at the road courses, you do it at Martinsville and short tracks, but they really wouldn't do it anywhere else. And they've never been much of an organization outside of super speedways, the occasional short track and road courses. Yep. But this year, they actually look really, really good. Now, of course, I think. He's back with um, he's back with Mike Kelly again, and all of his best work, uh, oh Richard's best work over his entire stock car career has been with Mike Kelly as his crew chief. So I guess that worked out that way. Those are two that really stand out. I mean, I think the this this is where I'll you know obviously I don't know. Do you have anybody else that I missed in either of those categories, Josh? Well, I mean, I, I think with William Byron, I mean, I, I think nobody thought that he would sustain his uh, level of success. And, um, you know, last year he had two wins and then fell off the face of the earth uh, until the playoffs. And this year, um, still still in it. He's second in the points standing. So, um, you know, he's definitely up there and he's proven everybody wrong. Um, somehow, Denny Hamlin called it right at the beginning of the year on his show. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm a little bit surprised by that, uh, cause I would have thought that he would have been better th or n not as good. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, I think, think a little surprised that, um, Martin Truex, like you said, being better than what he was last year. Um, um, yeah. And the RFK guys, uh, they haven't won yet, but I think at some point, I mean, they did win last year with Chris Buescher, but I think the summer is a good time where um, teams that haven't won um, have a chance. Um, you know, things happen during the summer, and they'll make it into the playoffs somehow. So um, I think, especially for Brad Keselowski, at the very least, you have Daytona uh, coming up in August, at the end of August where he could possibly steal win if he doesn't have one already to make it into the playoffs. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think you covered all the teams – there but yeah I, I think all all the guys you mentioned i yeah fully agree with as uh teams that have been either good or you know fairly surprising to start the year and i think that goes and leads into the out the category of disappointments um and i mean bringing up william byron more detail on that definitely true guy is uh been a prospect for many years Whatever you want to do, take it or leave it. Guy has the personality of cardboard, just like Clyde, but, um, and his daddy is involved with the university that's probably one of the scummiest universities in this whole entire country. But fact of the matter is, the guy can drive a race car, and um, he bangs Ryan Blaney's younger sister. So, or actually, no, I think Ryan's the youngest of the three. I don't know. I have to, I think that he's either the middle or the younger one, but whatever. It's getting his um, sister. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's nailing, he's nailing Ryan Blaney's sister. So, uh, and then Cale Conley got lucky and nailed the older one. Uh, that's the only redeeming quality he has. Um, but the disappointment category, uh, is wide open here i mean i talked about the eight car for rcr well his teammate is 28th in points and let's be clear here there's been two massive penalties on uh, eric jones and chase briscoe so he's really 30th in points um he now has been passed by clyde and clyde has missed eight races Austin Dillon's been a god awful this year, um, but it's not like it's that shocking. I mean, he's not really that great of a driver. He's never really been much of anything. Uh, he was outperformed last year by by um, Tyler Reddick, and I think that might have been part of the reason why, other than of course political views and stuff. But um, Austin Dillon has been an absolute waste. I mean, yes, they had to make a crew chief change because Justin Alexander had to get off, wanted to get off the road, and 
basically all the work that uh, uh, Austin Dillon's done in his career, at least in the cup level, was with Justin Alexander, so maybe that's part of it. But to be that far off and not even be in the same zip code as your teammate, granted, one of the greatest drivers in the last 20 years, but that's that's pretty bad. Uh, I would also uh, reference, I mean, I think the, I mean, it kind of brings up, I brought up Eric Jones, Noah Gagson, uh, missed uh, Sonoma, but he's been pretty terrible. The Legacy Motor Club, a.k.a. Petty, GMS, a.k.a. whatever, however many name changes there's been, that team has been ter- been terrible. Um, the last year, they they were factors at times with Eric Jones. Uh, they did win the Southern 500. Eric Jones had a chance to win more than one race last year. They haven't been a factor to do anything. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, every race he's been in, he's crashed or had some sort of issue. Um, I mean, it, they did make the announcement they're going to Toyota next year. So that's a um, interesting dynamic, being a third major organization, first outside organization, really, because everything has been Gibbs-centric. So this is the first non-Gibbs uh, organization that will be with Toyota, how that will all work out. But they've been pretty god-awful. And then, I mean, I've harped on this for a lot of the year. Um, I men- mentioned the fact that Kevin Harvick, they're going to have the announcement this week that uh, Josh Berry is going to take over his ride and probably it with who else is going to be involved in the announcement. I think uh, Rodney Childers will still be around as his crew chief. So that is a great situation for him. Uh because to lose, you don't want to lose one of the best crew chiefs, one of the best people in the sport, uh, in that sense. And now he gets to come in and kind of assimilate within that organization. Um, hopefully, can bring some outside um, understanding and views and thoughts so that they can make some improvements. But the rest of the Stuart Oz racing team has been absolute dog shit the whole year. Um, there was a, oh, I think about a three or four week stretch where Chase Briscoe looked like he had life. Uh, there was a Martinsville race where all of them were fast as hell. Uh, none of them won the fucking race anyway. But the 14 car last year ended the year with a lot of momentum. Uh, they were in a great spot to, they were in a great spot to, um, uh, win a few races in that playoff. Granted, it was on track position, but they started this year and they were they were terrible. There's been races, the Charlotte, the 600 race where they got nailed for the huge penalty. They probably had the worst race car on the whole entire racetrack, and that's pathetic. Um, Tony's sitting in the booth watching his cars all fall to the back. Of course. Well, of course, Kevin Harvick is moves back up because he's Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers because it's 600 miles. But the 10 car was dog crap, the 41 was dog crap, and the 14 was the worst race car on the whole entire racetrack. The 41, I don't blame blame Ryan Priest. People are not big on Ryan Priest, and I think it's a Northeast bias. It's any number of things. He's got Chad Johnson as his crew chief. I think that in itself gives him a pass. Um, they don't have great pace. I think that some of these racetracks, I think this weekend is a great example of a racetrack. He has won here before in trucks a couple of times. There are some racetracks coming up here in this next 10 races where Ryan Priest could actually make something happen. He has that kind of ability. You don't go and beat all these great drivers on the Northeast and in the modified tour without having talent. Um and he's beaten big names and he's beat and he's done it in the Xfinity series too. So I think he has a chance. Eric Almarola is Eric Almarola. I mean nobody gives the only reason he's still around is because Smithfield likes him. 
he really shouldn't be in a fucking cup car anymore. And if Smithfield had any, had any clue, they would just move their sponsorship either to Josh Berry or something, and they would get the same return because Josh Berry's a good old, he's a, he's a guy from, you know, Tennessee. humble beginnings and Tennessee. It fits the narrative. You'd get great marketing out of it. Taylor or Carol Moreau to eat a dick and leave and they can go and get some ride buyer like Sammy Smith or whoever to go and jump in with full sponsorship and drive around and run 25th or get Zane Smith for that matter. Put him in there, run 25th every week the way that Eric Almirola does and we wouldn't miss anything. Drew Blickensurfer is one of the most overrated crew chiefs on planet Earth. They could get rid of him and nothing would change. Um, but they're a terrible organization. I don't know what Tony thinks or cares about other than banging his wife and driving a top alcohol dragster. But I think he puts way more energy in that than he does yep. in the cup effort and NASCAR. I also think that um, Gene Haas doesn't care about anything, but he has a shit ton of money, which tells you all you need to know. His Formula One team is mediocre. His cup team's mediocre. Make a fucking choice, asshole. You have mil billions of dollars. Invest it, do something with it, and try to get your teams to be fast, or get the fuck out and get somebody who actually wants to be involved in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's this is ridiculous to me to be this bad. I mean, uh, Chase Briscoe, I don't like, I've said it 900 times on this show, I don't like John Klossmeyer. I don't think he's a bad person. But you talk about, oh, engineering, whatever. I'm sick of these engineer crew chiefs that don't know how to actually make calls. They have a good pit crew, one of the better pit crews on pit road. You have a driver who's hungry and wants to win in the worst way. You have to give him a race car to work with. If you can't give him a race car to work with, then get somebody who can. They have a crew chief in Xfinity that, could gave, that gave him a car that he won nine races with. And he's crew chiefing for fucking Riley Herbst. Riley Herbst, is a drizzling shit. He's four foot tall. He's a fucking Smurf. Nobody, ca you could give him, you could give him a fucking watermelon from which is going to go into the next team that has been, and they could give him a watermelon. He'd run the same, you know, get cold, gold Custer's crew. I, I mean, I don't care. Put Boswell on the fricking car right now. Put Boswell there after this week for the Chicago road course. Cause it won't matter. Nobody has data outside of SIM and their SIM data. Obviously is not great anyway. So put him on at Chicago, start next week, and let's go and let's get going here with nine races to go so that one or more of these cars could actually make the playoff when they're all in the middle of nowhere. That's my take, and I'm going to keep on yelling about it until they make that change, and they're not going to because Stuart Haas is a waste. Um, the other team that I think has been a disappointment, and I think it's convenient, um, is is a uh, track house yeah you know so, uh, because ross chastain did the hail melon got into the final four finished second in points had a career year he hasn't won a race since last april it's over a year it's in it, that he's won a cup race um he's had plenty of stuff go on since then um, Hendrick basically neutered him. I don't know if Chevy is not giving him the same level of support as they had last year. Uh, Daniel Suarez doesn't seem to be anywhere near as fast as he was last year. They seem to be struggling for pace. And they're not the same team. And there's a, there's a strong possibility that um, Suarez is going to miss the playoff which would be a huge disappointment, but he's got a multi-year deal, him and Travis Mack. So, and they have that third car, which um, I think at Chicago is going to be SVG. So take it for what it will, what you will. And then, but Ross Chastain hasn't won in over a year. And he was really good early in the season. And then ever since, I don't even think it was the Hendrick thing happening with, with Larson, but Prior to that, they started to fall off a bit, and now they're not really doing anything. And when you're trying to compete against two of the major organizations in this sport, 
and then let's add Penske to the to be that third because you have two big 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 drivers there. You're not gonna fade Hendrick, Gibbs, and Penske. That's what is it? Three, five, seven drivers. You can't fade them without having performance or having something. And um, I'm concerned, greatly concerned about their viability in terms of long-term viability within the playoff this year. I don't think long, I mean, viability about that organization are definitely very viable. Um, Justin Marks is one of the best people right now in the sport. Mr. 305 is there, so you know he's going to be making music and whatever, but you need to be running well, and they're not running well right now. Uh, I've went on for a while, Josh, so um, I'll let you go and give your thoughts on overall whatever you want to talk about with that within the Cup Series so far this year. I mean, yeah, you gave a lot there, and yeah, I mean, I agree with you with Stuart Haas. I mean, not to continue piling on, but of course, you might say that they're the most disappointing cheaters because um, Chase Briscoe penalty uh, penalized for unapproved parts and they were slower than they were without that. So yeah, that tells you how disappointing it really is there. Um, but that's yeah, all, yeah, just terrible. Um, I mean, go down right down from the top of the list and I mean, Ross Chassin, right, um, hasn't been anything basically been out to lunch since putting Kyle Larson in the wall at, at Darlington um, and riding on the fact that he just has a ton of stage points uh, this year and that's why he's still fourth in points. I think otherwise he would be much, much lower in his teammate. Uh, Daniel Suarez, like you said, um, you know, a year ago there was a handful of races where Daniel Suarez was a legitimate contender uh, to win um, um, especially on the, the mile and a half tracks. And this year, I mean, there's still only one spot out of the playoff, but, uh, so I guess points wise, I think they're, they might be where they were at a year ago, but, um, they just not have been contending, uh, really in any race, uh, like they were last year. And I think the laps led count kind of tells the story. They only have 16 laps led, uh, for Daniel Suarez. So yeah, I think that's uh, a little disappointing there. Um, I think um, on the other end, yeah, on the other end of the standings, you know, you have uh, A.J. Allmendinger, who I thought would be better in his second try at a full-time ride, uh, but it's going about as good as his uh, first time, you know, stint in the, the Cup Series. But really, this is actually his third full-time stint because, you know, he had that year where he was a part-time guy uh, in 2012-2013. Uh, and then you know the 47 for a bit and then now this is back back to the cup series for a, th a third stint so um yeah i think i think it looks like he's you know kind of just throwing mailing it in there you know last year xfinity and the year before that you know i thought he was pretty good but um and then the cup series last year i, th I thought you know uh, in his attempts and in, in uh, that car i thought he had performed pretty decently so um yeah disappointing there for AJ Allmendinger almost as disappointing as um, the petty GMS cars. Um, you know, they. I think that's as an organization, that's probably um, the most disappointing because they they exceeded expectations last year, and now you now now they're going back to where where they were a few years ago. Um, and you know, of course, they have no. It seems like they're kind of out to lunch and everything, and just waiting for Toyota to come in and maybe give them some funding um and in everything and have better better access to resources than what they currently have at chevy um there uh i think austin Sindrick, you know obviously won daytona 500 last year um and hasn't really done anything this year um i mean granted didn't really do anything last year after the daytona 500 but um you think when you're under your belt that you would be um more experienced and certainly performing better and of course it doesn't help that uh, Ford is not really that great this year overall, but still um, the lowest ranked Penske car, um, not even in the top 20 in points uh, there. Um, could argue Corey LaJoy, I mean, uh, they've been good in the seven car, but then the one time that he got a chance to be in a top ride, uh, he didn't really finish uh, that well. So you can argue that based on uh, that one race, even though, yeah, he didn't really have a lot of time, that 
that was an opportunity for him to really show how talented he was and he disappointed in that effort. So um, I think that one looms large because, you know, people have been talking about for a few years that, you know, he's this un, you know, uncovered talent. You know, um, you know, he's kind of a hidden gem, if you will, I guess. And, you know, I think that that one run might have might have been enough for, uh, you know, other teams that are looking to maybe hire him out of the seven um, to potentially, you know, take over a different ride and um, might think might be thinking differently. But um I mean, it's a little not not really fair to him in that regard because it was only one race, but still, it's something to think about. You know, pretty heavily. Uh, Harrison Burton obviously has not just not done well. Twenty ninth in points. You know, last year was doing doing really bad as well. But um, yeah, he's just continued to be poor in this uh, in the Cup Series. I think he's probably um, probably just has not done well overall in the Cup Series, and wonder if he should just go back to racing and if. Uh, Xfinity, so yeah, that's um that's another driver that's disappointing. Um, I think maybe there's other categories for levels of disappointing. I think you could you could qualify Denny Hamlin as a guy that's a disappointing driver this year because of just how much shit he talks on his podcast, and you'd think that he's the guy in the series. And yeah, he's eighth in points, right? Four top fives, a win, and six top tens, and two poles. Uh, but you could argue that. Um, based on how how he talks, that he should be in the top three in the standings. Uh, so that's why I could say. So it's not most disappointing or anything, but certainly there is maybe a level of disappointment based on just how much he talks. Um, then Kyle Larson, not really disappointing. So as much as it is uh, missed opportunities, level of disappointing because uh, I think they've had a lot of speed this year uh, and they just haven't been able to capitalize on. On that speed entirely, you had Fontana, the engine problem there, uh, Las Vegas leading with a handful of laps to go and lose it on the uh, restart uh, there, um, taking out at Bristol Dirt, uh, Talladega, Dover. So for him, you know, he probably has like at least three to four wins um, left on the table. He's already got uh, two this year, so um, you could think of him as somebody that has had good speed as as good as uh the 24 and uh the rest of you know martin truex and kyle bush and ryan blaney but they've just had uh, a lot of misfortune so from that perspective definitely somewhat disappointing but you know they're are, don't really have too much to worry about obviously they're in they're in the playoffs and everything so they can focus on uh closing races for the rest of the year uh for the rest of the regular season and go into the playoffs and and try to get a, another title. So um, a different level of disappointing there, I could say. But um, yeah, and then um, yeah, I think think that's you know all the all the drivers there that I think we we know have been pretty disappointing you know so far uh, to start the year. So we'll see how the second half of the regular season now with uh, NBC going to Nashville. So we'll see how uh, those drivers that they can turn around and make a run. And let's see some of these other guys at the top. Um, is this the peak for them for this year, or you know potentially uh, can they continue on? Um, you know, for guys like William Byron, Martin Truex, can they continue on their performance, or are they going to start seeing some inconsistencies throughout the summer? Obviously, the summer is, tends to be somewhat volatile uh, when it comes to performances uh, we, on week to week basis, and we see a lot of surprise winners. It feels like. Um, it seems like, you know, during, during this part of the year. So, uh, interested to see kind of how the trajectories change or do they say the same, you know, as we get ready, you know, for the NASCAR playoffs and, uh, you know, the end of August, September. Definitely, uh, something that <clears throat> with some of the wild card races that are coming up, Chicago street course, uh, you're going to have Atlanta super speedway type. Uh, slot car racing daytona to end the regular season uh, some of these other racetracks that they only go to once a year like michigan new hampshire those are all kind of races that you have to look at pocono of course um uh yeah they're gonna have multiple road courses there so you have three road course races coming up here in this uh, batch and then you have 
a bunch of kind of one-off type deals with, as I mentioned, with New Hampshire, Atlanta, or um, Atlanta and Daytona are two different types of super speedways. Nashville, New Hampshire, Pocono, and Michigan uh, before the two road races leading into the Daytona playoff uh, or the cutoff there. Let's get into the roundup. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Jorge Martin gets a victory by 64 thousandths of a second over defending series champion Peco Bagnaia. Uh, the Pramac uh, Ducati team gets two out of three on the podium. Johan Zarco, Marco Bisecchi, and Luca Marini gives a top five sweep for the Ducatis. Jack Miller, the best of the rest, with the, his KTM, but you round through the rest of it, eight Ducatis in the top nine, one KTM, one Aprilia, which was the um, satellite Aprilia team, R RF Racing, or whatever the hell they are, RAF Racing, Miguel Oliveira, Yamaha's finished 12th and 13th. What a cluster they are. And there was only one Honda in the race with Taka Nakagami after Mark Marquez, the king of the socks and ring, crashed and got injured. So a pretty terrible situation there. Uh, 16 points, Peko Bagnaia, the leader over Jorge Martin. Uh, it's basically a battle between those two guys. Uh, 34 points on Bisecki, 51 on Zarco. Um, Ducati's going to win the the title for sure. Uh, right now, the battle for the team's championship, Pramac, uh, because they have the most solid duo, uh, is leading over Team VR46, and the Ducati factory team uh, is third. They're only 11 points uh, ahead of KTM. So that's something to look at. Aprilia and Yamaha are in a battle for 5th and 6th. Then you go from there. Um, constructors, it's not a discussion really, Ducati. Because they have the most bikes, but then they have the best bikes. So um, so that's it. <laughs> They're going to Austin this coming weekend. So it's going to be a, one of the best uh, races of the year, hopefully. Uh, it's a one of the biggest challenges in in um, all of MotoGP to go and race there. Uh, some of the biggest names have won there, so um, that'll be something to look at in more detail. Uh, I mentioned the points already for MotoGP, uh, so we'll get into Moto2. And then, let me just... Results. Let's get into that. So the for Moto Two, um, Pedro Acosta gets the victory by two point seven three seconds over Tony Arbolino. Um, Arbolino and Jake Dixon pretty close there to round out the podium. Somkiat Chantra and Alonso Lopez round out the top five. And. None of the Americans scored points. Sean Dillon Kelly did finish uh, the race, though. Uh, finished in 17th. He was eight seconds off of a possible point. Um, Joe Roberts crashed with seven laps to go. So the points for them will go into... Where did you go? Yeah. No, that's not what I'm trying to look for. In the championship standings and Moto 2. Arbolino leads by 15 over Pedro Acosta. The battle for third is pretty condensed. Uh, you have Alonso Lopez by three over Dixon. Philippe Salik is in fifth, 10 points back from third. And Aaron Kinnett, Chantra, Lowe's is, what is it? 29 points out there so that's something to look at robert 17th in points sdk has not scored a point as of yet riding the only fans american racing team that's quite a combination 
okay. Um, move on to supercars at Hidden Valley. As I said, uh, um, not shocking the way this whole season has been. The Chevys dominated. Um, so that was that isn't shock. It's pretty interesting how that's worked out. The race the results so far. So yeah, going from Darwin Triple Crown. Uh Mark Winterbottom gets his first win of twenty twenty three for the team eighteen. DeWalt Chevy. Brock Feeney wins race two for Red Bull. He's the leading winner so far this year with four wins now. And Jack LeBrock for truck assist racing. Uh, the old uh, Gary Rogers Motorsports team uh, gets his first win of the season. So credit to them in terms of pole positions uh, last week for Cam Waters got the pole for race race one, Brock Feeney race two, and Jack LeBrock race three. So. That's the situation with that. The championship points as they move on for the next race. Uh, Brody Kostecki continues to lead Will Brown, his Coca-Cola by Erebus Chevy teammate, by 59 points. Brock Feeney is third ahead of Shane Van Gisbergen, uh, 91 points out of the lead. Shane Van Gisbergen is fourth, 110 out. Chaz Mostert, the best Ford. Uh, runner for Walkinshaw and Andretti United, 179 points out in fifth. Cam Waters is in seventh. Jack LeBrock moves up to eighth. And Mark Winterbottom moves up to 11th after his win uh, this past weekend there. Their next race will be in uh, Townsville. And um, that'll be a couple, in about two, three weeks from now. So they'll have a couple races in July. They'll be racing at Townsville on the street circuit there. And then they'll race Sydney Motorsports Park, Eastern Creek, legendary circuit there. So a couple of races in the month of July for them. In the next race at Road America... And we'll uh, get into that. The results from the race at Road America. Nolan Siegel gets the victory over Jacob Abel and Hunter McElray. Reese Gold, James Rowe, the top five. Kiffin Simpson qualified on pole and Colin Kaminsky was second, but they ended up getting buried. Um, Ernie Francis Jr. started 15th, finished 12th. Uh, Jamie Chadwick went the other way, started 9th, but finished 15th. Only two cars fell out of the race, Rasmus Lind and Christian Rasmussen. So the point standing is Nolan Siegel makes a huge gain by getting his victory while Rasmussen fell out. 40-point uh, lead now. For Siegel over his teammate, McElray is 16 points, I believe. Yeah, yeah, 16 points in out in third. He's five points out of Jacob Abel. Daniel Frost giving HMD Motorsports four out of the top five. Reese Gold giving him five out of the top six. Uh, Ernie Francis Jr. is in 10th in points. And then Jamie Chadwick, 17th in points. They'll be racing at Mid-Ohio in a couple weeks' time. Six hours at the Glen for IMSA. First race back for them in uh, since May. So that'll be nice to see them back on... Uh, uh, they have CS standing, blah, 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 da, 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 schedule... They'll be racing on uh, you know, Sunday. They'll have that on USA. They'll have the first portion of the race on uh, on Peacock 
and then they'll have or IMSA TV. That's in Uni or United States. You have to be on Peacock, but then if you're you can see it on IMSA TV, and then from two to five will be on USA on Sunday as a lead in to uh, Nashville for the Cup Series. There's going to be uh, for the six hours at the Glen, fifty-seven entries for the six hours at the Glen, which is amazing to see. Uh, eight, or is it nine prototypes, uh, GTP cars, three Porsches, uh, two Cadillacs, two Acuras, and two BMWs. Uh, usual suspects, of course. Um, Ricky Taylor, Philippe Albuquerque, Louis Delatraz for Conic Mendolta Acura, and Pippo Durrani, Alexander Sims, Jack Aiken for Whalen Engineering Cadillac. The only two teams running or having three drivers listed, everybody else running only two. And that includes Mike Rockefeller and Vanderhelm for JDC Miller and the uh, private uh, Lee Run J uh, Porsche there. Nine entries in LMP2. The winners at uh, Le Mans, the CrowdStrike racing by APR team of George Kurtz, Ben Hanley, Nolan Siegel, as I mentioned earlier, the Indy Next driver. He's a silver. George Kurtz, the uh, man who runs CrowdStrike uh, because he needs a driver because his usual driver is Colin Brown uh, in other series. So he gets the Indy Lights points leader. You have Tower Motorsports, TDS with two cars. They have Pearson, Guido Vandergaard. They need a third driver there. High class racing. Rick Ware will have Lux, DeFrancesco, and Pietro Fittipaldi. Um, and then PR1 Matheson, Ben Keating. And then AF Course is actually going to run a car this, uh, this weekend. Uh, Luis Perez Compnac. Lilo Wadu and Nicholas Nielsen, number 88, uh, all Orcas. In LMP3, there will be 10 cars, and that's uh, field. Uh, one of the teams, of course, is the Riley team. They're going to be moving up to LMP2 along with um, United Autosports is going to move from WEC over to LMP2, so that'll be great for that category. Erasmus Lind, another Indy Lights driver, driving for JDC Miller. Um, Andrew Pinkerton, a uh, sim racer, uh, drove in uh, in the Dinner with Racers series. He'll be driving for MLT Motorsports. Looking through some of these other ones. Andretti Autosport, they were in the GT category and got destroyed at Laguna Seca. Uh, Jared Andretti will be back in the LMP3. Gabby Chavez, Glenn Van Berlo. Uh, look through some of these. Oh, same usual people there. GT Pro will have nine entries. You'll have the BMW 95. The 95 BMW is being entered in the Turner Motorsport in the Pro category again. Bill Oberlin, Chandler Hull, John Edwards, the drivers. So we'll see how fast they can be there uh the corvette racing team number three garcia and taylor fap motorsports klaus bockler patrick pile the vassar sullivan lexus hawksford barnacote harder racing aston uh, uh af corsa ferrari simon mann miguel molina and some guy i've never heard of vc competizione ferrari with daniel Serra and davide rigon Andrea Calderari and Jordan Pepper and the Iron Lynx Lambo, and Daniel Yunkanella and Jules Gunyan and the uh, WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. And then the biggest category, 20 cars in the GT Daytona. Um, trying to look through here. Racer's Edge will be there because it's the Endurance Cup. The Iron Dames will be racing. This weekend, Ryle Frey, Michelle Gadding, and Dorian Peen, uh, after coming so close to a podium at Le Mans, Forte Racing, Lamborghini, 
You got Wright Motorsports and Zagreb Gradient, Yashina Monk, Catherine Legg, Mark Miller. Uh, when the 47 car is going to run again, uh, Magnus Racing, John Potter, Andy Lally, Spencer, Pump Alley. Going to go through, look through some of the other people. Tri, Tri RC Competizione, another Ferrari team. Never even know that guy's the owner, the gentleman driver. Yeah, so big field. Interesting to see how qualifying will go. Uh, it's kind of why I wanted to go for this race <laughs> as a fan because I knew it was going to be a huge turnout. I think I think I'm waiting. Waiting another year is not so bad because there's going to be more GTPs out there and more LMP2s. Hopefully, there'll be less GT cars uh, at that point. So maybe more pro category GT cars by that point. Uh, Rally Kenya to go into the point standings uh, for the WRC out of that's going for WRC to, yeah point standings going into this race uh, the Safari Rally trying to go and see here yeah Cali Rovampera leads the championship by 25 points and he's 33 point over Terry Newville and 33 points on Otanak. Uh, they'll be raced. They'll start their um, race at on Thursday morning. So that'll, we'll see how that goes. I try to go bring up data, the entry list for them. Amended entry list, okay. Yeah, so 34 cars. 34 cars in the race overall, but one, two, three. 10 in the Rally 1 category. That'll be the... There'll be three M Sport Ford Pumas. There will be three, four Toyotas. So that, wait, so it says 10, but then there's three, or no, three Fords, three Fords, four Toyotas, and three Hyundais. Yeah, okay. Now that Sebastian Ogier is going to be racing along with the regulars uh, at, with Cali Rovampera. Efren Evans and the Tom Takamoto Katsuda Hyundai Terry Newville Asapeka Lappi and Daniel Sordo and then I mentioned Otanak Pierre Louis Loubet and Jordan Serdaritis for um, Ford the um, rally two category is the the majority of the field though plenty of great competition in that uh, you're gonna have uh, oliver solberg in that you're gonna have martin prokop another former world rally driver and I'm trying to see who else stands out there some of these other names there has been some other solid a lot of uh african uh, base teams running this rally, of course, local. So that'll be something. A uh, Canadian duo is actually running. Uh, yeah, so there's that's about it with that. We'll see what happens. We'll talk about it next week. Uh, Formula E in Portland, uh, big deal. Uh, first time outside of New York that they've run in a for in the U.S. So that'll be something. We'll see what they do with that circuit. Uh, I typed it in wrong. And then the Southwire Portland e Um Three days away. I'm doing this, of course, on Monday. Um, coming off of a weekend where the Maserati 
team finally showed up. Uh, so that's something to look at. Pascal Verline leads by one point over Jake Dennis, uh, six points over Nick Cassidy. Mitch Evans is in fourth, John Eric Vern in fifth, Antonio Felix da Costa, Maximilian Gunther, Sam Bird, Buemi, and Jake Hughes round out the top 10. It's been a topsy turvy recent. Uh, races. Dennis has been the most con- been the most consistent in recent rounds. Uh, Cassidy had a couple of wins in rounds eight and nine, and then didn't have much to show for it. The last couple of rounds uh, did have a fastest slap. Uh, Verline had a win in round ten, but otherwise has had a rough go of it. Mitch Evans three uh, top fives, uh, sandwiching a, a round at DNF. Vern has fallen off here in recent races. Uh, so has Antonio Felix da Costa. While Gunther, after what has been, had been a really bad start to the year for the Maserati team, gets a P3 with a pole and then a win with a pole uh, in the last round of the championship to bring himself back up all the way to seventh. So it's interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Um, you have, what was it, how many people? Oh, so he's, yeah, he fell out, Kelvin Vanderlinde, but he was, I don't know how many of these guys, yeah, apt Formula E. So yeah, he's a, he came in for a couple of races. Uh, Roberto Mayer, he is going to be driving for Mahindra for the rest of the year. I think, no, Beckman is not going to be running for them. The, I think, uh, or maybe David Beckman is running for them the rest of the year okay oh no andre lauderer that's why because he was got his he had his um imsa um or not imsa but wec stuff he had to do we'll see with all that but we'll get into the points and what happens at portland next next race and f1 academy get into the points there just to finish that off uh, nobody is watching it. Coming off the news that they put the um, W Series in into uh, bankruptcy or whatever, so that's unfortunate for that series. After what they uh, provided for uh, women drivers, uh, Marta Garcia uh, has had a pretty strong season. Uh, she leads by. Uh, 41 points over Hamda Al Kabasi, Bueller, or Bueller, 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 Bueller. It's Bueller, probably. Um, in third, Abby Pulling and Amda Al Kabasi in fifth. They still they're going to run at Zanfort in here this coming weekend. Then they'll run in a couple of weeks at Monza. And just over a month's time in France, and then take a couple months off and run at Austin to end their season. We'll get in all those things next week on the GSP. Uh, let's go and preview NASCAR Triple. All right, so let's go and get into the uh, races at Nashville this coming weekend, Josh. Bring you back in here. Start with trucks, the Rackley Roofing uh, 200, Friday night, 38 trucks for 30 spots. Go and get into this. Uh, Tony Breidinger is going to be driving the one. For uh, Tricon, they don't have anybody announced, it looks like, for the 0-2 for Youngs. Uh, go through some of these other people. Corey Roper's back in his own truck. And um, Trey Hutchins attempting. We'll see if he does stay in the field. 
Nick Leitz will be driving the 20 for Young's Motorsports. Ryum Brothers right now are on the entry list, but entirely possible they may not be here in a couple days' time. Jonathan Schaefer in the 30 for On Point Motorsports. Uh, Bailey Curry in the 41 for Nice. Uh, Jack Wood in the 51 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Jake Drew running the 66 for Thor Sport. Timmy Hill back in the 56 for his, the family team. Uh, Justin Carroll making another appearance in his family run number 90. And then Memphis Villarreal in the, in the POS 46 truck. So there's definitely a few people I figure uh, the Ryum brothers are probably going to not uh, stay in the field so that that POS 46 truck can make it. But to be determined. Uh, I mean, we we talked about it earlier in terms of what's gone on so far this year in terms of the truck series. A lot of different drivers have won. Uh, Corey Heim, it says, is going to be there. So it's interesting to see what he'll do after having a few weeks off. But who are you looking at, Josh, in terms of people we should look at as a favorite and wild card for this Truck Series event at at Nashville? Yeah, there's definitely a um, short list here. I mean, I think Truck Series is you know very limited in you know, who can actually uh, compete, but... Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, Zane Smith is always the guy that you got to look at here who can, uh, win, uh, at any track. And so, I mean, I think he's a, he's a guy you want to look at in the, uh, truck series as somebody who, who can win at Nashville, of course, uh, well, finished second there last year, uh, in this race and 2021, uh, finished in trying to look it up here just to finish in fourth so he's pretty strong here at this racetrack as he is at many tracks here uh in the series so um yeah i'm i'm gonna you know go with him this weekend of course he's you know pretty safe pick there but um i i, I think uh you know he's been a little bit quiet though recently in the truck series so um i'll go with go with him uh to win this weekend um you know third in points so not that quiet but i uh, just haven't heard from him as much lately uh so you know go with him uh, and then, you know, I'm going to go, uh, I'll, I'll go with, uh, let me see here in the standings. Um, you know, I'll go with Jake Garcia here. I want, I want to see, we talked about him earlier in the show, um, being one of the better rookies here in the truck series. Um, let's see if he can get a, another top 10 here and maybe climb up a spot here in the standings. So uh, I want to see how we can do here this weekend, uh, Nashville, could be a good track for him. Um, it seems like it's one of those wild card tracks like we talked about earlier. So anything can happen this weekend. But yeah, definitely looking forward to see how, how he does, uh, you know, as they kind of get ready for the last couple races here before they make the playoffs. So Grant Infinger uh, and Jake Garcia, right? So oh, um, Zane Smith. Zane Smith. Okay, because he said third in mind. So Zane Smith, yeah. Um, and Jake Garcia. So, I mean, Zane Smith, uh, in terms of playoff play, I mean, he's been, it's, it's true. He's been, it, it makes sense because you, because it's been a little bit off. I, I think being spread thin with running the cup car might have thrown some things off, but they have to start committing, uh, to this truck effort to try to repeat. So I figure front row, with Chris Lawson and, and company will go and, and do that here at Nashville. Now for me, in terms of who I think is going to win, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Nick Sanchez. I think it finally happens. He finally gets his first career win in uh the truck series um and he locks himself into the the title race 
I mean, they've been fast at a lot of racetracks this year. I have a hard time believing that they won't be at Nashville when they've had all this time to prepare. All right, now you look at the point standings. We're going to go through here. Oh, you got before. Um, take the top 12. You said Jake Garcia. You usually go with him. I'm going to go with him this week. I'm going to go with Roger Carruth. Why not? Um, yeah, so Roger Carruth, one of these days, I figure, takes uh, um, takes that next step. He does have experience at this racetrack. He raced as a teammate with Nick Sanchez last year in the Arca Series. So um, uh, we'll see if they can bring it around. I know that GMS wants to have more than one representative in the playoff. So one way to do it is given the two rookies, uh, Roger Ruth, Daniel Dye, some fast race trucks. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, okay, Xfinity Series, 41 cars for 38 spots. Um, speaking of being spread too thin, Zane Smith's going to be running in the 28 for... Uh, the Siegs, so guess we get into that. Also noticed offhand by unintentionally that the Formula E is going to run at Portland International Raceway, so that'll be interesting to look at. They're going to amend turn seven a little bit so it isn't like what they ran for NASCAR or what they're going to run for IndyCar, but be curious to see what kind of times they put up there at a fully permanent circuit uh, on at Portland International Raceway. Uh, Tennessee Lottery 250, they'll be running that one on Saturday. And 41 for 38. St. Smith will be driving, as I mentioned, the RSS 28, which comes off of victory the last time out. Carson Hosevar for Spire will be running the 77. Yeah, Blaine. Ty Dillon will run again in the four car for JD Motorsports. Stefan Parsons back in the 07 for SS Greenlight. The 08 will actually have Mason Massey in the SS Greenlight number eight. 08, AJ Allmendinger going to drive in the 10 for Colleague. You know, Keebler Gibbs in the 19 for. Of course, his grandpa, yeah, Connor Mozak, and Kyle Sieg will be running a number 29 for RSS Racing. Parker Retzlaff, after uh, falling out of the race early last time out. Emerlyn Gase, I think they announced somebody's, I forget who they said was going to get into. Yeah, David Starr, so lovely. Um, David Starr is going to be attempting in the 35. For um, Emerlyn Gaze, Joe Graff is in the 38. Uh, Sage Karam will be driving the 44 for Alpha Prime. CJ McLaughlin in the 53. Chad Fincham in the 66. Dawson Cram in the 74. Uh, Chad Chastain in the 91. So those are all the change uh, change up drivers there uh for me i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna go with uh john hunter nemechek to get the victory and i don't think that it's that big of a stretch uh they'll be running in the afternoon so it'll be a bit slicker uh they run qualifying midday the practice is going to be in the evening right before trucks race, so they're not really going to get a fully accurate uh, return on what they're going to have for the race itself until the end, maybe. Uh, in terms of who... 19... Uh, so, uh, for a wild card, for me... I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Brett Moffitt. 
Uh, they have had fast race cars at times this year. So it's now we're getting in a crunch time for the playoffs. They have 12 races to go, so they have more races than anybody. But you want to start building that momentum. And um, I figure that's where they'll they'll be able to put it out there. So JHN to win. And uh, Moffitt wildcard. What say you, Josh? I think you know you had some good picks there, John Hunter, but uh you know, I'm uh I'm gonna go a little bit different here. I'm gonna say that you know, I think Josh Berry, I'm gonna go with him. It's a little little bit out there because some what we talked about earlier, but um yeah, I I think he's done enough this year where they could could win. Um I think yeah, this is a home track for him from Tennessee. Uh, and everything, and obviously just uh, announced or will be announcing because uh, the you know they basically all but confirmed the rumors. Now all that's left is the actual announcement deal. But uh, you know they will go to the number four for Harvick next year, like we talked about earlier. So um, if he wins on Saturday, it'd be pretty fitting uh, for uh, that announcement, of course. So yeah, I'll go with uh, number eight here. He's due for a win uh, here in the Xfinity Series and uh, hasn't won yet this year. So go with him and then my wild card uh i'll go with carson hosevar uh who's in the 77 this week for spire did really impressive uh in his uh run uh back at charlotte you know about three weeks ago now so um really really good in uh, his attempt here in the Xfin or in the xfinity series so far so you know i think in another track here it's really challenging um uh, it's a very, you know, very much kind of a driver's track here at Nashville. Kind of, I mean, Charlotte has kind of turned into that, you know, as of late. So I'll say Hosevar, and I think on the other end of that, I think Hosevar ends up being the uh, replacement for Josh Berry next year in the Xfinity Series. I think that's probably what will happen there. Um, they probably get sponsorship from WWX or whatever he's sponsored in the Xfinity Series or Truck Series that. They also sponsor with Chastain and Cup, so I think that's probably given there. So, um, kind of, kind of a fitting uh, way to pick uh, for yeah for this weekend here at Xfinity in Nashville. It's interesting. I was thinking about going with Barry, but I'm like, I don't know if uh, after making that announcement, if the momentum, what will happen momentum wise. But I was like, I kind of wanted to pick him, but I went with John Hunter Nemechek and went a little safer. Um, I didn't really want to peak Keebler Gibbs because I figure he's going to dominate, but whatever. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And then Hosevar, yeah, I, I agree. Likely, very highly likely that, uh, he's going to get that call, uh, to go up to Xfinity and go to junior motorsports, which will be a big deal for him in his career. Okay, so let's go to, I talked about that. Let's get into the Cup Series, the Ally 400. They'll be running Friday Friday night. Um, they'll, be, uh, they'll be running practice on Friday night. They'll run qualifying in, on Saturday afternoon prior to the Xfinity race. And then they'll race on Sunday night. Interesting scheduling there. Um, get into let's get the get the points out there. Josh, you can go first. Uh, what you're thinking um, in regards to the Ally 400 at Nashville first race for NBC? Yep. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting there uh, this weekend. Now, now that they're doing a full time night race and everything, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, you know, I think it's going to end up being a track position type of race um, there this weekend. So, um, you know, I'm I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Denny Hamlin. I think you know he had a he had a good run last year in the at this race, and I think he probably should have won this one. Um, you know, it'd be interesting too um, if he does win because he'll talk about it on his show and everything so i think that'd be interesting there but 
Um, I think, you know, they, they've had some good mile and a half speed as well this year. So, uh, I mean, Nashville's not quite a mile and a half track, but, uh, kind of, kind of in the same shape nonetheless. Um, and it's definitely a driver's track where you have to really work the throttle down and, you know, he's definitely one of those guys. So yeah, I'll go with Denny this weekend. Um, wild, you know, wild card for this weekend. Uh, let me, I want to pull the standings back up here in truck or in, in, uh, in cup, but let me see. I've got, got to pick, uh, hold on, 23, okay, no, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, Justin Haley, yeah, outside the top 25 or top 20 right now, so, um, yeah, he's, I think he's, even though he's three spots below AJ Allmendinger, I think he's done a little bit better uh, than him performance-wise for the season. So go with him as a wild card. This, you know, might be, might be a track for him where he can do, do really well. Uh, so we'll see if he can, you know, I'd say top, top 15 would be a solid day for him if he's able to do it. So yeah, I'll, I'll pick with uh, Justin Haley, maybe a, a surprise pick on Sunday night. Yeah, that's an interesting pick there. Uh, definitely something we can look at. It'll give us uh, uh, something because you look at the way that uh, uh, whatever colleague has been this year, uh, they need something to happen. I mean, if we're going based on, well, he's a, well, that actually cancels him out because it's saving because you have what is it, twenty six. 25 you have a technicality there as well yeah i do i do i and i that's why i'm i was trying to i was trying to look at the one technicality um because we're going through here 25 26 27 28 29 30 so yeah so yeah in theory in theory if we're talking about everybody who has run uh, all the races, there's only been 30 drivers that have run all the races. So it's really the top 15. And that's what I thought, and I was thinking you were going to go that way uh, with your wild card. You can amend it. Yeah, you you're, you can amend it. Um, I'll give you that chance because I'm hemming and hawing a little bit, but... All right. Uh, if, if if we're allowed to amend, then you know what I'm going to go. I'll change that. Then we can we can do that here. Uh, yeah. I will fade Justin Haley, and I will go with Daniel Suarez here. Oh uh, yeah. That's, Didn't I? No, I'm I'm letting you have the other pick there in the technicality. I'm let. I'm going to go because with, there's because there's two technicalities. Yeah, there's there, two but, technicalities, but so, you know, I. And, I I like him. He's he's got Tootsies on there. They're the bar in Nashville, so uh, you know that'd be good press if he won. Yeah, even though most of them are like, "What's the hell is that Mexican driving that dang Tootsies car?" You know, it doesn't fit the whole narrative for them idiots. But um, yeah, for me, I'm gonna go. Speaking of somebody who probably spent plenty of time at Tootsie's, um, I'm going to go with Ryan Blaney as my winner for this uh, weekend at Nashville. And he gets an off week, got to spend it with his smoking hot girlfriend. And, um, you know, YRB to win. And um, my wild card is going to be William Clyde Elliott. Uh, because he's 29th in points and that's it. Um, he's not going to be eligible once. I, what's going to happen is both William Clyde Elliott and Alex Bowman. Right now, Alex Bowman is technically outside of that, but I think he's going to point himself in above it. So then he's going to cancel himself out. And then he's eventually going to win. And then Clyde's going to win. And then both of them are canceled. So then that means we're going to have to move our... We're really going to be picking the bottom of the barrel here in a few weeks' time once both of them uh, take care of their business. So uh, pick William Clyde Elliott while we still have a chance. 
Um, I didn't pick Alex Bowman because I'm not so sure about him at Nashville compared to Clyde, who is a defending race winner, and he's 29th in points. So uh, that's it. Those are our picks. So, Josh, it's your time. Uh, let us know what's going on in the world of sim racing, uh, iRacing, and uh, uh, F123. A lot of talk in the Grid Talk group about the F123 and then other gaming platforms there. I mean, you bring that up, and um, yeah, that's coming out uh, now. So um, that'll be that'll be out here. I mean, it's out on June June sixteenth already. So it's yeah, it's being released now. So got to go and. Uh, try and download it, but um, the story mode should be interesting here. Um, yeah, I I like the story mode in F one twenty one a couple from or F one yeah F one twenty one a couple years ago, and uh, F one twenty two storyline was pretty good. But you know the breaking point, uh, Aiden Jackson, the protagonist and the antagonist, and now your retired uh, driver there. Uh, in that story, all making appearances, so that should be interesting. Um, but really, the um, the handling, I think, is what I'm looking for. Um, seeing if uh, it becomes better than what it was last year, more realistic uh, here. And you know, an interesting thing here is that um, iRacing, you know, they have the safety rating system that they use to rank drivers uh, as far as you know license class, and uh, they're expanding that. Uh, into this uh, series here this year so that should be interesting because I've seen videos online and I've played online a couple of times with F122 and you know things get pretty sketchy at some points uh, so I'm I'm looking to see how uh, they you know implement that and does that improve the quality of of racing uh, you know on online uh, there so that that's kind of what I'm I'm looking for uh, in terms of safety rating and how that improves uh, improves the game. Um, they've got all kinds of other um, games or, well, I guess features. Um, the F1 world that I guess was the F1 life last year um, and kind of just, uh, I, th I think it's just a thing where you literally collect like goods and items and make yourself, your character, um, purchase like rich rich people stuff or whatever which i don't know if i'd be really interested in so there's still some of that aspect in there that i'm not sure i i like but yeah i'm definitely looking for um the handling uh aspect and how realistic it is compared you know to um how it was last year and you know how how do we compare it to because i mean i obviously i racing has had a couple of f1 cars out there uh, how does it compare in terms of driving uh, to that? Um, so I'm looking, looking to see how that goes. Um, seems like from the scores, seems like it's getting most generally uh, favorable reviews. So seemingly it should be should be a interesting one there. At least you know four four out of five stars uh, somewhere around there. So yeah, pretty solid job and um, definitely try to look at getting one of the editions of the game. Haven't decided if I'm gonna get it on pc or on playstation so um either get it on playstation maybe play with some friends there or get it on pc and i can hook up my wheel to it or something like that so i haven't decided yet but i'll try to figure that one out soon um but yeah should be should be a good game and definitely looking at uh getting that one and uh you know getting in getting into it like all the other people on youtube you know probably are right now so look into that um and of course, iRacing, you know, the normal schedule back to, you know, season three now in iRacing. So, uh, in 2023, so, uh, you've got the trucks, Xfinity and cup all at, uh, Nashville super speedway, uh, this weekend. Um, good track there. Uh, I did pretty well in the Indy cars when I did that one. So I want to be able to, and I, I don't think I've ever raced it on Nashville in, uh, the cup side or the xfinity side so definitely want to try and get in on there um i don't know about the trucks trucks is almost like the truck series in real life and everybody runs over each other there so not sure if i want to do trucks uh really um you have the formula fords at lime rock park always a good one um you got uh 
global M yeah the Mazda MX-5 that uh, Laguna Seca uh, the GT4 challenge at the Watkins Glen International with the boot so I think they're kind of trying to mimic the six hours of the Glen there with that series um, the 87 cars at old Texas Motor Speedway uh, with you know prior to repaving that um, let's see if yeah series list here see some of the other races um, we've got uh, we got let's see the Arca Menard series at Pocono the Gen 4 cars at Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, we've got the Formula IR uh, series at Olden Park and then the Delara Dash at Texas Motor Speedway. And the interesting thing there is that the Delara Dash and the Formula IR cars go 250 in the draft. So um, Texas Motor Speedway, 250 in the draft, kind of going back to the old days of kart in 01 and 2000 where they were going that fast there. Uh, Darlington, so you've got the Indy cars at Darlington for some reason, so that might be funny. Uh, I don't know why that's kind of interesting there, but it'd be definitely single groove the racing. Current Indy car? Yes, the Delara IR18 at Darlington. <laughs> wow, that's that. <laughs> hey, you know what? If it works, then then we have another option for Indy cars. Uh, I yeah. think they would rather go to the, Richmond, maybe, or because it's such a <laughs> four fest there for Cup. Yeah, but you know, maybe Richmond or. I don't know, Michigan or the Milwaukee Mile where Roger Penske was this past weekend, not at Road America during race day. Uh, time Majeski won the ASA Stars Tour, but okay. Just uh, just yeah, a few I, other I, I know, that I, they might want to go through. No, I know that, but um, yeah, I mean, it's shocking that they would put the Indy cars at, at Darlington. Um, I don't, I really, there's, I don't really know how you'd be able to pass because um, it's a single group groove racetrack and it works for nascar because you can you know just fence somebody or dive bomb them in turn one and i feel like indycar there's there's a not a whole lot of room for error um like there is in nascar at darlington so i don't know how that one will work um but i mean i think they've done it in the past so i'm not surprised by it but it's just um yeah it's kind of interesting and i've never attempted it so i don't know how how it will go but maybe i will we'll see um Gen 4 Cup at Indianapolis, like we said earlier. Um, yeah, looking through this, yeah, I think this is all the series that I'm really interested in. So, yeah, there's always, you know, plenty of choices, plenty of variety uh, of things to play on and race on with iRacing and, you know, of course, other games, F123. So, um, yeah, looking forward to being able to play F123 when I'm, once um, I'll try to do it this week. Uh, yeah, iRacing, as always, being able to do that always fun so yeah that probably it for sim racing you know the segment this week so you know go ahead and start closing out but you can always go ahead and follow uh twitch tv slash you sailor too go on there follow all my stuff for uh sim racing and everything see all when i decide to stream and whatnot so go in there and hit follow and i'll make sure to share when i stream um of course got my twitter account at jp huffine on twitter Go in there and uh, you know follow me and um, see all what I have to say or am interested in. Um, of course, follow uh, our Grip Strip Podcast YouTube channel. Go in there and and talk. You know, see what we have to say, and we'll have our Tommy Kendall in, uh, interview up there as well. And go in there and see him talk to us and and everything. So yeah, go on there, subscribe, like, comment, view the page, and. Yeah, that's uh that's all I got this week. So it's always glad to be back and glad glad to you know be able to discuss and everything. So yeah, that's that's all I got. Absolutely, man. Wouldn't do it with anyone else, as I always say. Have fun. We talk about all things, all different motorsports, month away from football, so that'll definitely start picking up since there's no hockey or basketball anymore. Uh, and baseball is not looking to do good either. Um you can find me at PG Matthew 28 on Twitter. You can find me at Philip G Matthew 28 on Instagram. Uh, you can find us at Grip Strip Pod on Twitter. Josh, of course, mentioned the YouTube page where we po post the video stream of the show. Uh, you can find the podcast 
on Podbean, which is the host site. We can also find it um, at on philipgmatthew.com. And basically anywhere you hear podcasts, you can get the Grits for Podcasts, you can get some of the other podcasts, uh, people that have been on the show, and we go and guest on, like Grid Talk, um, et cetera, et cetera. We'll be back next week for episode 175 of the Grits for Podcast. We'll review Nashville, all three races there. We'll talk about... Uh, we'll preview IndyCar at Mid-Ohio, Formula One at Austria, and uh, review all the racing that took place in the roundup. Asin for MotoGP Moto2, uh, IMSA Six Hours at the Glen, uh, Formula E at Portland, which I might actually want to watch because it'll be on an actual circuit. Um, and whatever else is coming along here uh, leading into Independence Day uh 1776 we order champs um with that uh for josh i'm phil thanks for listening to gripster podcast take care and goodbye